have been discussing uh, thermodynamic properties from volumetric data uh, and as of now uh, uh, all the derivations which we have done is considering P and T as independent variables. Okay, so now we are going to move forward and we will be considering how do we calculate thermodynamic properties with volume and temperature as independent variables. Okay, so as we know and we have done this exercise earlier, so this is all through a Maxwell relation that for a fixed temperature and uh, mole composition, so this is nothing but N1, N2 and so forth. Okay. Or earlier we have used this as simply N. Okay. So, at a fixed N uh, mole composition, so we can write considering this is a V and T, okay, uh, that means volume is fixed right, or given a volume. So, usually when you consider a volume, we automatically consider internal energy, when we consider pressure, we consider enthalpy. right. So, uh, now we can look at this uh, differential uh, uh, internal energy, which can be written in this. This is something which we have uh, seen earlier okay. and the derivation is straightforward from the first law and as well as uh, Maxwell's relations, right. Now, uh, given these two relation, you can integrate this, okay, from a volume uh, infinity to V, okay, very large volume, which corresponds to basically nothing but ideal gas or zero pressure. So, if you consider this, uh, we can use the same approach as we have done for the case for P and T uh, as an independent variable. Uh, here, V and T are independent variables and you can evaluate U as a function or uh, U as a function of T V n as V to infinity. Okay. So, you are integrating from infinity to V, uh, okay. you are coming from infinity to V, but uh, you can, re, uh, so considering that you can rearrange. So, corresponding to the infinite volume, you have a term this. Okay. So, this is nothing but U minus U at T v is equal to v infinity and an integral of infinity to uh, v and this term okay right so you can rearrange this to get this expression okay because by rearranging this infinity if you can swap the limits you will get instead of t partial derivative of p with respect to t minus p as simply p minus t power Similarly, you can do the same thing for ds by del p by del t. Okay, here also you can get s minus t v is equal to v infinity, and okay, and this is going to be uh, this term. Okay, this plus this term, this plus this term, right? So if you take it this other side, you're going to get this part. So, what is this? So, again we earlier if you recall we have added this term and subtracted this term and we plugged in here in this expression. So, this particular is nothing but the uh, bracket. So, this is nothing but a bracket okay. and this term which is uh, nothing but uh, minus v minus the integral of v to infinity n t r by t here for the mixture can be shown as to be this term. Okay, this is something which we have done earlier. So, without going into derivation, I am just writing this. Earlier, if you recall, this was based on p, okay, when we considered p as a uh, independent variable. So, similarly, similar exercise can be done for the case where we are considering v as independent variable. Okay. So, you can come up with these expressions also. So, uh, to avoid derivations, I am just writing out what else uh, we can get from there. Now, if you have the information of U and entropy, you can get H easily, okay, which is nothing but this term. You can get A, okay, again this is a U term minus you have T S, you can get G also. So, once you get G, we know that for the case of uh, N, V, T, as an independent variable, the corresponding free energy is Helmholtz free energy A. For the case of uh, N P T, the corresponding free energy is G, and that is why when we have N P and T as independent variable, 
to evaluate or to calculate chemical potential, we simply take the partial derivative of G with respect to N i. On the other hand, when you have N V T as independent variable, we take partial derivatives of A with respect to N i, that is what we have done here. Since A is here this, now we can use this expression to calculate this. Okay. And from here, we can come up with this expression. Okay. Now, the question is how do we evaluate this? So, let me just try to explain this or rather derive this part. Okay. That means, for the case of data where you have V and T uh, are independent variable, we can write this fugacity coefficient in this form. This is different from the form which we have used earlier, where the pressure was independent variable. Okay. If you recall, you know R T L N F by Y I P is equal to 0 to P. 0 to p v i bar minus r t by p d p, right. But here it is different, why the reason for that is since v is the independent variable. Okay. So, how do we get this? Okay. See, if you also look at it, the left hand side we are saying t p n for given t p n. Now, this p we cannot control is the volume which we are controlling, but this p is basically corresponding to the v volume final condition. Okay. But the data on the right hand side, uh, the data, data is available is based on only volume, not on p and that is why we use the right hand side expression to get the integral form. But the left hand side says the fugacity at temperature and pressure, given temperature pressure. So, for example, if the question is for you is that you have a system which you are interested to, uh, to find out the fugacity and the temperature and pressure and the mole compositions are given to you. But the data from the experiments are available only in terms of the volume or volumetric properties are uh, obtained. So, you can, uh, uh, you, you, you know, the data, for example, uh, the, for different, different volumes, informations are available from extremely small molar, uh, you know, uh, something like, you know, 10 to minus 5 molar uh, or the liters, for example. So, from very, very small volume to very large volume, if the things are available to you, in some form, then you may be able to use that. So, that information you should know. So, that means, for example, if I 100 points corresponding to volume and the other information there that for each volume this is the other properties, okay, for each volume in a given temperature, I am varying uh, for given temperature, I am varying the volume from let us say from very V to infinity or rather infinity to V. Okay, from very, very large system, infinitely large volume to V and for each volume in the intermediate point, I need to find out the partial derivative of pressure as a function of N i. Now, this is a tricky part. How do you calculate? Because I do not have a handle to the pressure, right? What I am interested in is the pressure of the final thing. So, P is dependent on the intermediate volume also, but this is the expression which we get and we can make use of it. But before I get to the point and explain how to do that. Let me first derive this expression. So, uh, we can take a generic expression also. Where does this term come from? So, let me try to simply use this information here itself to derive this part. Okay. So, if you look at here, this is the information of the chemical potential, right? And you know that mu i minus mu i 0 is nothing but R T L n F i and uh, by F 0. So, this part actually corresponds to mu is u minus T s plus R T. So, this is nothing but mu i for ideal gas part. Okay. So, this you can show that this is the corresponding to ideal gas part and this is nothing but your z. Okay. From mu i minus mu I of ideal gas itself, you can show that this is nothing but this okay. for I. Okay. This is something which we have shown earlier also, mu I minus mu I ideal gas is nothing but RTL and this. And so, this is how it simply can be shown. So, of course, from here, so what is the key thing is basically showing this express. Okay. These are the two important things, so once you do that, the rest of the things are straightforward. Okay. Let me consider 
this uh, expressions and let us say for a PO system, PO fluid, okay. for a PO fluid if I consider the same expression in terms of the variable, so again considering V and T, these are the independent variables, I get the following expression F PO I P P by P equal to V by infinity P by n of whatever the uh, component i is okay, minus R T by V T V minus R T L n Z plus R T Z minus 1. Okay, this is the expression from the earlier expression which you can and this is something which you can derive also. Okay. Now, this equation becomes very difficult actually. Okay. But the earlier expressions which we have calculated earlier is much more convenient which was nothing but the integral of V i bar or V minus R t by P right? that is more convenient to say that. Because one of the reason is that mostly experimental uh, uh, no, experimental studies they are done usually considering P and T as independent variable. So, that is one of the reason that the earlier expression is more conveniently to, to use, but if you have this or particularly for mixtures this expression becomes much more useful okay. and using P as a P T V N we can easily model such a thing. In other word this is be, this expression becomes useful when we use equation of states. Okay. So, this is more easily you can use equation of state because here you can plug this pressure here in this form and you can do the rest of the things. Okay. So, similarly you can take for the mixtures the partial derivative of the pressure with respect to N and you can derive all the things. Okay. So, for, for that we can consider an example. So, again so mixtures we can use uh, equation of state and the web equation. So, example let us say is let us say this uh, N R T. So, in the case this is a mixture. So, I will put as N T V minus N T B minus N T square A by V square is equal to R T V by M A. So, this is something which we can use now to find out uh, the, so this is nothing but molar volume right, this is nothing but V by N T. Okay. Now, uh, what are the A's in this case for the, for the Van der Waal equation, uh, you can calculate from the uh, critical property. So, if you take the critical property conditions such as, uh, so to calculate A and B we use del P by del V, yeah. Okay. So, for mixtures we have to come up with, so that is fine, but for mixtures we have to come up with other things also. We have to come up with some kind of a mixing rule because you have many, many components. So, usually for B we, uh, uh, let me just write for A, A we write this expression A i j where this is double summation. Okay. So, my is equal to 1 to m and i and j is equal to 1 to m. Okay. And for B we again use here B i j. Okay. So, this is one kind of mixing rule to obtain A and B for the mixtures. So, uh, and the question is what is A i j? Again many times we cannot evaluate this. For example, uh, you can find out A and B for the pure system directly from the critical uh, temperature and you know informations of the phase diagram, right. But for, for uh, binary mixtures or in general mixtures, you do not have just one critical point. For many uh, composition, you will have many critical point and you can you can have a critical line. For different composition, there will be a specific T c uh, for a constant P c and thus you can draw a critical line, thus it is not directly 
uh, feasible, but it, if you want to model it, uh, you have to make understand how to get AIJ, but these are difficult part. Ys and Yjs are available because that is how you are going to uh, do the experiment, but what about AIJ? Again, here also we make use of uh, some approximation, one, uh, one partic particular approximation is Berkeley formula, okay, where we, are cons we consider Aij to be a geometric mean of Ai and Aj and Bij as the arithmetic mean of Bi plus Bj. Okay. So, this is something. So, once you have these different components, pure A and Bs, which you can calculate from their critical properties. For example, if I consider proton, propane and butane, so I can get A of propane and B of propane and as well as for butane. And once I mix it, I will be using this. Once I do, I have got this AI, AIJ and BIJ, okay, I can get A of the mixture depending on what is the composition. Okay. All right. With this approximation, this is simplified, it is written as simply Y i B i okay, with this approximation. Now, if you apply this to Van der Waal equation of state using this Berkeley mixing rule, the following expression can be written. So, I can get this ln f i again T p n by y i p. Okay. Now, I have the expression of p which is as a function of other terms, right. I have to plug in here, right. And then the fugacity in this following term ln v by v minus b. Here v is capital V divided by nt, remember, okay, plus b i by v minus b minus 2 summation y i a i j v r t minus ln z. Now, of course, you cannot remember this equation of state. This is very, very complicated, but this is how it is derived. Now, if you change this equation of state to other equation of state, the expressions are going to be different. Okay? And there are many popular equation of state. Van der Waal equation of state, for example, is not widely used because it has a limitation as far as the range of other uh, you know, temperature pressure it can cover. But the popular equation of state such as your Runge, Quang, so, I will just uh, going to just uh, make a note of this expression which we are going to get if we had used other equation of state. So, the other equation of state is let us say Redley's Quang equation of state which is this. So, so this is the, the first term is, is the same term as in the uh, Van der Waal equation of state, uh, and but it has this additional terms which basically is to correct uh, and provide uh, some temperature dependency in this form. Anyway, so if you use this equation of state, okay, where A's are related to this uh, expressions, okay, where these are the part of the molecules properties, okay, so, okay, and this is something given in this way, and this is the mixing rule is same, but A's and B's are of the individual molecules is not just uh, dependent on. I mean, it is not in the same as we have seen in the Van der Waal equation. So, so what is the AB for example for pure system? For AB for pure system is going to be this. Okay, for Van der Waal equation of state. Okay, for the case of this uh, Reynolds uh, Quang equation, the expression is different. Okay, but nevertheless, this expression may change because you are changing the equation of uh, state. The mixing rule. If you use uh, Berkeley rule, then these are going to be this. But in general, we are going to use this. Uh, uh, A's and B's in this form, and then you can come up with this expression. Now, look at the complicated expression here. You cannot remember this, right? This expression is finally the expression, okay? You cannot remember this, you can derive this and may and plug it in you in your in the Excel sheet or some write in the program. That is something which is expected one to do. And now, these are the uh, equations which are already plugged in in many softwares already. Not a very new equation of state. Okay, these are already very old. Now, the modification of Reynolds Quang is Reynolds Quang or RKS, so equation of state, 
where another term alpha comes into picture which depends on the eccentric factor which talks about the shape of the molecule. Okay. And now, you have A for the pure system is this with alphas and again here we are using the similar kind of mixing rule, okay. where basically alpha now for pure is alpha, but for the mixtures is going to be alpha ij, okay, which is given in the more complicated expressions. Now, in here the mixing rule is not simply arithmetic uh, average of the b's, but there is another term which is multiply which adds to or corrects, corrects the this uh, ideal way of uh, uh, averaging the b's you know, by a term which has an interaction parameter. Okay. So, you it, it means basically it can get inside a bit also. right? Now, here k i g these are the correction to the uh, simple uh, Berthelet rules. Okay. So, uh, this and this is basically geometric mean of a alpha. Okay. Now, a alpha is a term which is basically, so a is a typical uh, energetic terms given by the uh, Van der Waal. Right. So, this alpha is basically a bit of corrections to that which depends on the eccentric factor of the molecule, which the Van der Waal equation as a do not capture because it does not take into account the shape factor. Now, this term together can be written in this way to get an average value or the value for the mixtures A uh, for i and j. Now, if you do the this geometric uh, mean, then this would be this, this term multiplied by this under root of that. And then, since there would be, I mean, if there is any specific uh, deviation from this, this is given by this term, which has this binary interaction parameter. Okay. Now, this can be fitted. Now, the question is, you know, does it has a very significant, uh, uh, or does it, uh, does this term can be connected to any physical meaning? Okay. It's difficult to say that. So usually, what is done is basically we fit this to the binary uh, to the data of the experimental and evaluate these terms. So, this is the fugacity expression of this. Now, similarly, you have the spang robinson equation. Again, you have this term A alpha. Okay. This is the, the denominator is, is modified a bit. Alpha has the same expression. This is for the pure system is same. Okay. Here again, we are doing the same exercise. Okay. Here, of course, you can see the same term. So, you got an expression like this. Okay. And these are the expressions which you cannot remember, but of course, you have to understand the left hand side expression or the fugacity can be evaluated using different means if you use a different equation of state and not necessarily everything every equation of state will behave uh, equally uh, good some may behave better so you can if you have a given the data you can fit these expressions evaluate it and then you can check whether some of the equation of state is uh, better or not by comparing with the exact values from the experiment. So, this is something which I expect the later part of the course you would be able to appreciate it. Now, what we can do is we can move to the next part, okay, which essentially is the approaches to phase equilibrium calculations. Okay. So, uh, uh, today's lecture will stop here and we will continue in the next lecture uh, different methodology uh, which we can adopt in order to calculate uh, phase equilibrium calculation depending on what are the variables available. Okay. So, uh, you can uh, do a du point calculation, bubble point calculation. So, what are the typical algorithms we should have, uh, adopt in order to solve uh, such phase equilibrium calculation uh, effectively. Okay. So, see you in the next lecture.